97.1, The Fan. There's a lot of reasons. Uh, one, I became a hero in my household. In fact, my wife and family are, are really excited that I'm coming back. But uh, it just, at, when leaving, it kind of had mixed feelings about leaving. And then having the opportunity to come back, it just made all the sense of the world and was really happy when, when Thad had talked to me about coming back. Like, I couldn't get here quick enough. So it was, it was great. Dad said that he, you guys talk fairly regularly, so it wasn't like a call out of the blue. Um, did you have to think about it long, or what, what was that, the process like deciding to officially come back? It was a quick decision. You know, Thad asked me if, if I'd be interested, and I immediately said yes. He was like, well, where is your interest? I'm like, I'll, I'll walk there if you want me to. So uh, it was a quick decision, and uh, just really happy, you know, feel, feel very much at home. So it, it, it's... We're looking forward to it, for sure. You know, I think um, there's some lifestyle differences probably between coaching in the NBA and certainly coaching in the D League and then coaching in college. And I'm sure college is probably a little more demanding in some respect. Just why um, why take that challenge back on and, and maybe leave um, a, a coaching job that allows you to have a little more time to yourself maybe? Well, it's just a different job. You know, there's there's the same demands – they're all demanding and it's just that coaching in college is a different capacity and uh, one one coach has said to me uh, when I came here previously and, and he said the one thing he enjoyed about college coaching is you wear many hats you know you have like seven hats a day you're a counselor you're a recruiter you're a coach you're a parent you know all those things and I appreciate that about college coaching. So I look, I look forward to those challenges and uh, the type of job that is college coaching. You know, one thing you didn't have to do when you were in the NBA and D-League was recruit. I'm just curious how it was getting back on the road. I think you were back on the road this past weekend. Just what that was like for you. I like that part of it. You know, it was good. It's fun to, uh, you know, as you talked about, you kind of get to be your own GMs uh, as, as coaches in, in college. Now, obviously, you don't always get the guys you're, you're looking to get, but um, it allows you to be an individual as a coach, too. You look for different qualities in a player that, you know, another coach on the staff might. So it's, it's, a really, it's a really good part of the job. And it's, it's obviously um, has more to it than just going and observing. It's got a lot more layers. But it's a fun part of the job. Chris, coming off that, did, was there anything that you learned from maybe your first stint here recruiting-wise that, that you think might help you uh, now that you started back here again? For sure. Uh, you, you learn the trade itself. You know, there is a, you know, there's a process to it. There's a way to go about it. So having had that experience previously, you kind of know exactly what you're getting into. Whereas before, everything was kind of new. You know, I was just kind of exploring, asking the coaches step by step. But now I know what works for me, and I have a game plan. So it makes it a lot easier in that respect. Yeah, just kind of building off of that, you talked, we talked about the recruiting, but how do you feel that you're different as a coach now than your first time around here at Ohio State? That's a good question. I know that I'll be of a better aid for Coach Mata, having had been a head coach last year, because uh, you know you talk about how you feel, and I only had that interim job uh, with Orlando as a head coach previously to that job last year. So you really respect the position and all the demands that go into it. Even though it's a different league, you really see what all all that goes into that job, and it's it's a tough one, you know. So I know I can help him, but I also having coached different individuals. Um, Along these three years of travel, I know I'm a better coach and a better communicator. And also stuff on the court. You know, I have a more of an opinion in certain areas. So I've certainly grown over the last three years. You mentioned being a head coach, being an asset now as an assistant, you're actually not the only former head coach on the staff now. But is that going to be – are there going to be any challenges for you in that regard going back into an assistant role after serving as a head coach? No. No, it's not. Coach Meyer runs a show, and that's fine. I'm here to help him. I'm here to help the program, the university. So that won't be a problem. Um, and Coach Ma is great. Like, he gives you a lot of responsibilities, and he allows you to grow as a coach day to day, which is another reason why it was so easy to come back. Chris, I'm curious. Obviously, you had your own stuff going on, but I know Thad said you guys keep in contact. How familiar were you with what was going on here, and what do you see moving forward here with the kind of the state of the program as you return? Um, yeah, we, I was well aware of, of what, what was going on. Um, 
Coach and I started talking a lot after my situation changed in Sacramento, just as a friend reaching out and kind of opened that line of communication. So we, we've been talking pretty frequently uh, throughout that last year. Um, what I see is opportunity. You know, I see a group of guys here that uh, with their commitment and their focus, um, hopefully last year's a motivation uh, moving forward. And uh, so I see a lot of opportunity for the people that are here and also for those that are going to come in the future. When we talked to Thad last week, he said he hadn't exactly sat down and decided who's going to coach what part of the team, offense, defense, things like that. He said that was going to come Monday. What do you know, or what will your role specifically be on the staff? Do you know yet? No, we'll, we'll discuss it. You know, and uh, I know that Coach has confidence in all of us, and, and we'll feel comfortable in, in whatever role he puts us in. So uh, we haven't discussed it much, but um, it'll be defined, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll attack those those positions and our duties the best we can. I think a lot of us, when we think about uh, your coaching tenure, we think about uh, the offensive end of the game. And when Jeff Bowles left, he was known for looking over the defense. I wonder where you feel you are um, as a defensive coach. Yeah, I can, I can coach both sides of the ball, you know, and it's, uh, I like to think of myself as a basketball coach, you know, pretty uh, well-rounded. So, you know, whatever we do, I've had some great experiences both trying to apply things I thought were important to the defensive end, but also have played and coached with a lot of very good uh, coaches in that side of the ball. You know, last time um, when, you, when you left here, one of the things that you had said was it was tough to get used to only having a certain number of hours that you would like to have more time to instruct guys. What sort of challenge is that going to be, again, having to deal with there's limits on how much interaction you can have, how much time you can spend on the court. What's that challenge going to be like adapting to that again? Just really have to maximize it. You know, there has to be a great focus and intent when you get on the court. There can't be any wasted time. You know, you can't, you don't have time to get loose and to, you have to get after things as soon as you step on the court and there has to be a certain level of intensity every day that you get out there so you maximize the time that you have. I don't know um, how much you've been able to familiarize yourself with the roster, but when you were here, the team was very good offensively. The last two years, they've seen dips and, and weren't that good in some stretches. I'm just curious, when you look at the team you have, do you see a lot of room for growth offensively? Do you see um, maybe guys who, who have a high ceiling who haven't quite gotten there yet? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's college, right? Uh, trying to reach your potential. And that's a that's step by step process, and having guys understand what they need to be and how they can best help their team is a progression. It takes a little bit of time, and how teammates interact and react to one another out on the floor. Oftentimes, when you're together for a, a certain period of time, you get better. And I think that's what's going to happen. We can look forward to uh, next season. Is these guys are going to have a whole summer again of being together and working together, and that should produce growth at both ends of the floor. And uh, you obviously weren't here, but they they lost some players, and and Coach Mata's message has sort of been moving forward with guys who want to be at Ohio State. You're obviously a guy who wants to be at Ohio State. Just what what does it do for the program when there are people invested in in the success of of this university? You have to understand that there's a lot of things much larger than you as the individual. And certainly this university is much larger than anyone in this room, anyone in that court. And once you embrace that and understand that you're not only playing for your team, but your school, your university, uh, you play different. You play a different style of basketball. And uh, I expect that everyone that is going to step on that court will, will play with that type of pride. Just wonder what sort of goals you have as you get your feet wet here and you know start to familiarize yourself with being back. What do you hope to accomplish? I want to attack every day. You know, I really want to help this program every day, and whether it be recruiting, having a conversation with with one of the guys, helping them understand their academic responsibilities, whatever it might be. I want to make sure I'm trying to do my best every single day to. Uh, get that 1960, get, get a, some company up there on the wall, you know, and that's that's was the motivation when I got here previously, and that's certainly the motivation this time around as well. Um, Thad had mentioned that you were um, recruiting Jay Sean Tate before you left here. Are there any other guys on the team now that you have any sort of previous relationship with? Yeah, yeah, I, I had, you know, I was involved uh, with Kata, um and I uh, actually, Jay Kwan, I was like the first guy to go see him play in Evansville. So all the guys, uh, I, you know, Cam, I had met. I, I wasn't actively active in his recruitment, but got to know him a little bit. So it's kind of it's neat. 
like all the guys that are here and David Bell as well, all those guys that are, that are here, I, I knew previously, and I think that's going to help us moving forward. <clears throat> Chris, I just wanted to ask you, when, when it was finalized and all that, what was, what was the reception like the first time you met with the guys? And you mentioned the guys that you knew, but what was that kind of reception like the first time you got back with them and it was kind of for sure that you were going to be back as an assistant coach? It was really, it was, it was great. You know, I, obviously knowing the guys a little bit it made it easy. But um, I, think they're, I think they're excited. They know what I'm about. Um, so I think they were excited. And, and you know, I think it was obvious that I was happy to be in the room. So um, yeah, it was good. It was really good. Hey, Chris, at, at this level of uh, college, you know, a lot of these guys have aspirations of going pro. Uh, with your experience uh, in the NBA and the D League, how can your experience of what you know how to play there transpire to college kids who want to aspire to that level? Yeah, I think it would help a great deal, um, especially, not especially, but all those experiences and seeing on every level that being in the D-League and seeing the difference. What is the difference between an NBA player and a D-League player? And it's not all on the court. You know, a lot of it has to do with maturity, how you handle yourself, how hard you work, you know, all the things, the intangible things that kids may not see or want to improve, but they play a huge part in your development and growth. So I think that those experiences will weigh heavy and have already weighed heavy um, even the, the previous time that I was here in trying to help these, these players get to where they want to be. You, uh, what do you like uh, working with Thad? What is it about Thad that you enjoy, I mean, now in the second stint? Where do I start? I mean, <laughs> uh, he's one of the, first of all, he's one of the best people. I know. And when your boss is genuine, and I don't care where you go, any, any recruiting you do, anywhere you go around the country, the one thing is always said that Thad Ma is a great guy. And to add to that, he's as good of a basketball coach. And to match those two things, it's, it's, a, it's a special deal. Like, it, there's no mistake, there's no, you know, it's not by luck that he's been so successful. It's because of his ability to coach the game relate to young men, to help them grow, and his quality of person. Like, he's a genuine guy. And uh, uh, he's, he, it's great to be back uh, working with him. Um, his sense of humor, you know, he makes it, it's fun. It's fun and, and enjoyable. And you also learn and get better as a professional. You uh, were known, you know, back in your playing days to have that intensity. I mean, you've, you've talked about that. Uh, is that, as an assistant coach and on the staff, is that what you, what is it you want to bring uh, to this to this group um, that you're getting uh, back with here? Yeah, I hope to bring a lot, and I'm going to bring intensity. I mean, and I'm going to bring uh, an expectation of pride, of school, and a level of play. So the way I played, I don't coach the same way outwardly, but inside and when we're in the practice gym, um, I, I make my message pretty clear, and it's nice that coach allows us to uh, to voice those opinions and have some freedom as assistant coaches. Kind of further down the line, I suppose, um, when when you were announced as the new hire, the uh, assumption out there is that you could be the next head coach in waiting. And I don't want to throw out too much ahead of time, but I just wonder if that's something that crosses your mind at all. If that's anything that you talk with Thad about, that like, hey, I want to be a head coach again, and you know, maybe this is my opportunity down the road. Is that something on your radar at all? Well, I don't think there's any coach in the country, uh, maybe not any coach, but uh, to say that you wouldn't want to be the head coach at Ohio State, I mean, I don't think there's too many people that say, no, I wouldn't want to be the head coach at Ohio State. But my job is to help Thad Mata and to get better in every facet of the college game, you know, with recruiting and, and, and every other area that, that it represents. So I'm here to get better, and I'm here also to help the program succeed as it has in the past. So whatever happens in the future, it happens. Our goal right now is to get these guys ready uh, to have a great season next year. I just wonder how much of Ohio State have you watched since you've been gone? Do you, do you catch every game, most games? I know travel and such, you know, probably couldn't watch them all. But how much have you been able to watch the last two, three years? I've watched, I've watched more 
in the past few days that I've been here that I did all year. I mean, I was totally consumed with my team in Bakersfield, and I would try to watch when I could, but I was watching D-League, and if I wasn't watching our team play, I was watching other D-League games just because that was what I needed to be concerned with. Um, I watched a lot more the year before uh, when I wasn't with uh, Sacramento Kings, and that situation happened. I had time, so I was always tuned in to Ohio State, uh, as was my wife and girls by the TV. Did you get a sense at all from just talking to Thad that this past year weighed on him any differently or that this was kind of a tough year? Because, I mean, he stopped wearing the tie. He, you know, talked to us about how this, this team frustrated him, I think, in some different ways. Did you get a sense in your conversations with him that this was a tough year for him? He was pretty relaxed. You know, he was pretty relaxed. He, I think Coach has a great understanding of what was going on around him. And he's just trying his best to make things work. Right? You're just trying to make the best of the situation you have. And I feel like when we were talking, he was okay with it. You know, he obviously had some, it was a little bit of stress, obviously, trying to deal with some issues, but he was addressing them and, and trying, to, trying to get it to work. And I feel as though he felt confident in the staff and himself and, and moving things forward. So he, he wasn't like uh, out of character, so to speak. He was still fat. I'm curious. We talked a little bit about how you're different, your second tenure here. I'm wondering how you feel the program, the school, is different now than when you were first here. Yeah, it's a good question. It's a different, it's a different situation, you know. And every team is a different situation, obviously. But this is very different from when I walked in the first time. You know, everything's rolling along. You've got some senior leadership. You've got one of the best players in the country. So yeah, it's a different job. Um, but every year, again, is, is a different task. And, just, and they all have their challenges. Just because that team may have been more uh, a larger you know, group, it had its challenges. And you still have to make those work. So yeah, for sure, it's, it's definitely a different situation. In addition to that, I mean, Thad builds teams over the course of the season, but he's trying to build a program over the course of his tenure here. And I'm, I'm wondering if you've seen Ohio State take steps in that aspect, you, do you, building up to being a great program. Have you seen that? Well, I see a great program. I've seen that he's done that. And I see how the university has helped us improve that. I mean, the facilities we're sitting outside of are incredible. So they've aided this program into being as successful as possible. And Coach Mata has built a program. And you're not going to you're not going to be outstanding every year. It doesn't matter what school you are. It's what do you do in moving forward and how do you continue to grow? But I don't see Coach having any, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have a, a view of, of not trying to keep things going to the highest level we can possibly do it. You know, that's the challenge. That's a challenge. And now today's kids sometimes want that, that quick gratification. But it's a grind. You have to work and you have to earn it. So I think the program's there. The program's built. And... Uh, and he gets an awful lot of credit for, for that, as he should. My last question, if you don't mind. Um, you talked about how any coach, this would be a great job for them if they could get the head coaching job here. Given your background, I just wonder if it would be fair to describe the head coaching position at Ohio State as your dream job, ultimately. Oh, yeah. Being a, a student athlete that wore scarlet and gray and uh, I like to think left everything on the court every time out there. You know, it's a different, it's a, a school pride is a very unique and special thing. And when you have it and it means something to you, uh, yeah, it's incredible. And I think the, the, the most important thing that I think our teams took away when I was here is the relationships, right? It was the team, the locker room, and the fact that right now I can pick up any guy I played with and we can have a conversation like, We've been talking every day for the past 10 years. And, uh, and that's what matters. And, and when you feel that and you live it and you show it every day, I think it's contagious. So yeah, I mean, for sure. What are, uh, Thad's obviously got a pretty good relationship with LeBron. And I know uh, obviously your paths have crossed a little bit in the past. <laughs> um, being back here in Ohio, have you heard from LeBron at all? I wonder if there's any if he's excited that you're back here at all, or I guess if you had any conversations with him. You know, it's the first year I haven't talked to Bron. Say, hey, Bron, if you're out there, you know, what's going on? You know, I haven't talked to him this year. Like, it's been, well, I saw him last summer, and this is the first basketball season 
since we were working together, you know, in Cleveland. I haven't talked to him. So, I don't know, I'm sure he's happy. You know, he, he, he loves Ohio State. And, uh, you know, he, we have a good relationship. You know, even though we haven't talked, you know, it's kind of one of those things where we're still, we see each other tomorrow. It's, you know, how you doing? Everything's good. So, I'm sure he's, he's happy. To the program, I mean, Thad's talked about it, but you know, another tie to a guy like that. What does that do? What benefit is that to this team? What benefit is that to this program to have ties to a guy like LeBron? Well, I mean, it's great. It's obviously great um, him being an Ohio guy, you know. And and again, he didn't attend the university, but he sees it as this as what it should be seen as, and and that's a great institution. And I think you have to take that away from it, you know, that pride in state pride in school and even though he didn't attend you know it's kind of that that aura that Ohio State has and I think a lot can be taken from that but even moving beyond that in a, in a basketball sense you have to as a player here look at Braun and see the type of person he is and, and because he's attracted to the program and the university you got to try to uphold a certain level of of play you know a certain level of um, commitment because he's such a committed athlete, I think, you know, and I think it's great for schools, especially Ohio State, to have someone like that uh, vested in the university. Are you recruiting his son yet? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. That's a good. That's a no, not. <laughs> but you know, he's always got a home. <laughs> Your number one source for sports, 97.1. The Fan.